Hi and welcome to this tutorial on Texturex YZ's new product, VFace. I'm very grateful to Texturex YZ for allowing me to be to test this product on a personal project that I have been working on. Uh, as part of this video I'll be looking at what you get in the pack and then talking through a little bit about how I'm implementing the maps on my model. So as with all my head sculpts I prefer to start from a sphere without having to worry about topology or having to try and erase a face that's already there. I find it much easier to work from the blank slate that the sphere affords me. In this case I'm sculpting the character Gawain from the movie The Green Knight which I was a huge fan of. It's a really beautiful film uh, and I was very keen to make a likeness study uh, of the main character. It was played by Dev Patel. Uh, it was quite a challenge uh, with this particular face and required quite a bit back, back and forth um, but I'm at a stage uh, with a model where I feel like I want to get it into lighting and see what's working and what's not. And this is a model as it stands that I'll be taking into lighting. I use Marvelous Designer for a pleated collar at the front but everything else is sculpted. And you'll notice I've only put in very specific skin details. I've not put in any pause detail at all. I've left the skin completely clean so the texturing X with Z displacement map can be placed over the top. So let's move on and have a look at what you get in the pack. So there's three folders here head, references and extra. And if we start by looking in the head folder you can see we have folders for geo and maps. The geo folder contains two meshes. We have a nice closed mesh and a nice open mesh. If we go back to maps uh, we can see the bulk of, uh, of, the, of the product that you're actually buying here. So we have an albedo, a calibrated displacement map, the multi-channel a displacement map and a utility map and then within this folder here we have several ID masks uh, for use in look dev. So let's take a quick look at the maps. Uh, here obviously is the albedo. As you can see it's 16k so we're getting a very high level of detail. Then we have this calibrated displacement map which can be used out of the box to replicate the skin exactly. And then of course we have the more traditional multi-channel displacement map which is my preferred route um, because it gives you a lot more control in LUTDEV. The way that this map differs from the previous multi-channel maps is that the detail is much more accurately split so you're not getting as much repetition across the channels. Again this map is 16k so the level of detail is extremely high. If we take a look at the channels we can see that in the red channel we have the primary skin details then in the green channel the tertiary skin details and finally in the blue channel we have the micro skin details and it's this channel where we can really see the level of detail that is in the map with again you know this is all at 16k so all of the pause details are extremely well represented across the map. The last map in this folder is this utility map which looks like this uh, again it's split across the channels so in the red we have a hemoglobin map there is another map in the green channel and then the most useful is in the blue channel here which is this pause map uh, which again has a lot of information and is extremely useful uh, when controlling things like the roughness of paws in LUTDEV and adding more detail to the skin. Then back in the ID mask folder we can see the masks that have been uh, provided. These are really useful uh, for controlling various regions of the face. You can dial in and out the displacement amount or the roughness amount uh, or make changes on the fly to color correction and it's really useful to be able to work directly in the shader using these rather than having to go back and forth into the texture maps and adjust them there. It's much much faster. Elsewhere in the pack we have a references folder and in there we have three folders uh, calibration, HDR and lighting. Uh, in calibration we have the LUT dev scene without uh, the subject in there so that you can use that to calibrate your own LUT dev scene. HDR which has three different files in there uh, for use in your LUT dev scene and then lighting which is a series of photographs that you can cross-reference against your renders to make sure that you're getting the correct result. Then if we go back to the main folder there is extra and here we have eyes uh, and various eye geometry and eye maps and then groom which consists of uh, some some groom geometry and then various kind of scalps for generating groom from. 
So let's take a look at the geometry that you get with the pack. So I merged everything into one scene here just to um, make it easier to view. Um, and if we go into solo mode, then this is the main base mesh that has been sent through to us with the head scan. Uh, so it's pretty decent. And then we have a range of various parts for uh, emitting groom. So these are all separate parts but you can use as a basis for groom. It goes all the way through to the eyelids there which is really handy. Moustache, even the nostrils. And then you have some actual groom geometry as well. So uh, you have the eyebrows, outer eyebrows, eyelashes down, and eyelashes up. And then obviously there are eye geos as well. So you've got your irises, the flare, toe ducts, uh, and eyewear meshes as well. But what we need is this. So we're going to start with this. What I want to do is project it onto my model, which is here. What I want to do is here append the head. So I should have selected the head there first. Go back into here and append the head. Now we're obviously in slightly different positions, so I'm going to take this one and move it up roughly into position. Just so that we're in the same kind of general area. Okay. Okay, the next thing I want to do is remove the mouth bag and the eye sockets uh, because I don't need them for protection and when Zwrap uh, tries to deal with those we often end up kind of uh, shifting around in odd ways uh, which isn't really desirable. So um, I'm going to solo mode. The mouth bag is fairly easy because it has separate UVs so we can just polygroup auto groups with UV and then we can hide that. And just go uh, delete hidden. Let me just double check that there is now no mouth bag in there. Um, the eye sockets are not isolated on UVs, so just need to kind of come in and get rid of a couple of loops. So I'm just going to use uh, Z modeler to do that. So we want to go to uh, delete and poly loop and then you can just do an auto groups get rid of that get rid of that and delete hidden i'm just going to do a quick check auto groups with uv just to make sure the uvs didn't get messed up there at all looks good let's quickly check on the map Yep, all looks good. Great, and now we are ready to start wrapping. Okay, so I'm using the plugin version of Zwrap. It's a bit cheaper than the standalone version, and whilst the standalone version is very good, um, the plugin version does everything I need it to. So I'm just going to click Start Zwrap and wait for that to start. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, enable uh, Sync Views which means that when you rotate your model, it will rotate on both sides at the same time, which makes it much easier. You can also enable symmetry, uh, but as we can see here, the model doesn't have symmetry exactly, so I'm going to leave this off for now. So now we can start placing our points, and I'm going to start with uh, the eyes, and just start placing points in the corners of the eyes, and you want to do it one by one on the left side and then the right. Now. I've made a mistake there, as you can see, I put one on the mirrored side instead of the same side on the opposite model. So just need to be careful of things like that. I'm going to skip ahead um, to the end of the points uh, 
process just so you don't have to sit here and watch me place points uh, for five minutes. Um, but I think I'm about happy with this. So once you're happy with your points, it's a good idea to save them. So you need to save for both sides. So I'll just save this side and call it XYZ. And then go to the other side. Save this as well. And I'll rename this target. And then that's the points pretty much done and we can move forward to the actual wrapping. So I click start wrapping and it's a very quick process. I've not sped this up um, in the video at all. It's all working in real time. And if we zoom in, let's take a look and we can see it's done a pretty good job. Everything's looking fairly neat. There's a couple of small areas that might need some cleanup, but nothing too bad. I generally find it's better not to overdo the amount of points in areas like the cheeks. Um, it can cause this kind of uh, pinching that you can see in some places where the mesh is pulled to try and meet that point. So it's better just to let Z wrap do its thing in those areas because it does a pretty good job of them. So once we're happy with that, we can click done. And there's our head wrapped to our sculpt. And it's all looking pretty neat. So I'm pretty happy with this. However, there are going to be some areas that need a little bit of tidy up. I'm going to load in a flipped version of the albedo map here and apply it to the model just so that I can see where the detail is being placed. As you can see, it's uh, it's all pretty good at the moment um, in most areas. What I am going to do though is just switch to a skin shade so we can see that a little clearer and then add a layer of subdivision just to get rid of, of that faceting a little. So we can see that it's pretty good overall. There's just some areas around the nose uh, that may need a bit of tidying up. So what I'm going to do to fix that is uh, start to mask areas and then move them around. It's it's best to mask the area because if you don't, if you try and project the entire thing, you will start to get projection errors. So I'm masking this and then I will invert that mask and then select my move brush. And just start to nudge areas into a better place. So that detail is really sitting right on the crease of the nose there. Give it a quick smooth. And then I can come into Subtool and project all. And I'll have to click no because I don't want to lose that texture. And I'll just keep going through and doing this for any area that I feel needs tweaking. From here, I will export the target mesh and the source mesh and bring them into X normal. Um, I'm using X normal because um, I don't use Mari uh, very much and it's quite expensive. Whereas X normal is a free plugin. It does a great job of reprojecting uh, textures. So here we are in X normal. First thing I need to do is load in my high resolution mesh. There's already one loaded in there, but I can add a mesh to that and then remove the original one. So I want to load in the source mesh, which is the texture XYZ mesh that's being reprojected onto my sculpt and remove the other mesh that was in there. I then come into low definition meshes and load in the target mesh, which is what I want to project my textures onto. And remove the other one there. Then we want to come back into high definition meshes and add the texture to bake, which in this case, I'm going to start with the multi-channel displacement. into bake options you can see it's set to uh, bake base texture and it's already set to 16k I just need to set the path and I should be good to go I'm going to save these in a separate folder called bake maps um, just for 
organization. And then we can click on generate maps. Now I've sped this up quite a bit for this recording because it does take a couple of minutes to do, especially when you're working at 16k. And there is a final reprojected multi-channel displacement map, so I'm going to close and then come in here and change the base texture to bake. And I'll keep on doing this for all the maps. This is the albedo and then I'll do the utility and the ID maps. The ID maps you can bake at a lower resolution so they should go a bit faster. Again it's sped up but these were much much faster due to the lower resolution. So here we are in Houdini. Uh, I'm using Arnold in Houdini to render and uh, this is my skin shader. There's nothing hugely complex about it and it was quite quick to set up um, but it's very powerful and I'm able to control a lot within the shader itself rather than having to go back through the maps. Down here I have my texturing XYZ map coming in. Uh, this map has a mid value of 0 0.5 so I'm using this add node to add an offset of minus 0 0.5 then that's going into a multiply where I'm splitting out each channel RGB into this layer RGBA node. And you can see here I've named everything up. So I have displace, tertiary and micro and I'm able to dial those values in as I see fit. Below there I have uh, my skull displacement. Again this map has a value of 0 0.5 so I'm adding an offset again of minus 0 0.5. Again, going into a multiply and then this is coming up to another layer RGBA node where I'm mixing the two both for a value of one with a sculpt displacement uh, operation being set to plus and then this is coming up here into the displacement out of the sub output. If we go over to here I have my roughness map. I'll give you a quick overview of the setup and then we can go into a bit more detail on what everything's doing. So obviously I have the main roughness map. I'm just using an inverted version uh, of one of the channels from a utility map here. Just add some variation. I have a color correct just in case I need it. Um, and then I am running all of this into this layer IGBA. Uh, from here I'm taking the mask ID maps uh, that we baked out before. And I'm splitting each channel out so that I can control various regions. And just bringing those into the mix value of each layer of the layer RGBA node and so in this one for instance I've named these up so I have forehead, nose, cheeks, eyes, lips and ears and then because there's a maximum of eight on these I've got a second one here and if we go up to the top we can see I have chin, top lip, nose tip. So let's have a look at how those work in practice. Uh, I have the roughness going into this switch shader here. So if I can switch this to one, uh, then it will render just the roughness map uh, without rendering any of the uh, material with the SSS. Um, and it gives me a good uh, representation of what those roughness regions are doing. So I'll come back into that layer RGB node. And all I need to do now is dial in the values and you can see it updating on the map. Looking at how it looks in render. Again, let's have a look at cheeks. So I can set this to be much lower so it has less roughness. As fed these renders up, my computer is not this powerful. And then I can tweak that as much as I need to until I get right value. Over here, I'm bringing in the utility map. I'm just taking the blue channel, which is the pause map that we had before. Uh, I'm inverting it and then bringing it up here into this layer RGBA node again, where I am mixing it with the sum of these. And I have it set to screen. Uh, so this will be adding roughness to the pause. So looking at that render of a roughness output, I'm able to dial the value in, have these as faint, 
or as strong as I want them to be. Let's go back to the shader and have a look at the coat setup. So I'm taking the sum of a roughness network into here. The first thing I'm doing is inverting it because I don't want coat applied to the pores. And if we run this in uh, as it is, the whitest areas are in the pores right now. So I need to invert that uh, to be correct. Then it comes into a multiply node, which is where I can set the actual strength of the coat. And then I'm running it into another layer RGBA and I'm using the ears region of this ID mask to mask out those ears uh, just because it was feeling a little bit too much uh, on his ears to have that coat on there. And looking in the shader itself for what the coat is doing is the roughness is much lower on the coat and it's just adding that extra little glint and uh, secondary specular hit to the skin, which really helps with the realism. So if you look at a render here, and this is uh, without the coat on, but with the pause enabled, what if we switch to one with the coat enabled, you can see it's just sharpening things up, adding that secondary hit, making it a little bit more convincing overall. And I'll just quickly zoom in so you can see the difference that the coat layer is making in a little bit more detail. The great thing about working with a nodal system like this is that it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. For instance, you could take these ID masks and use them to control the level uh, of the texturing XYZ displacement on a per region basis so that you can spend time really tuning in how strong you want the details to be in various parts of the face. It's an extremely flexible and non-destructive way to work. So let's look at a work in progress render. We've still got a fair bit to do on this. Uh, the groom is currently in progress. Uh, there's still some passes to be done uh, on detailing the textures. And even in some areas, I want to improve the sculpt. Um, and especially as we go along, we'll want to finalize the likeness and, and really nail down that. Um, but if we zoom in, we can have a look at the detail that we're getting from a texturing XYZ V face maps. And as you can see, it's extremely high across the model. It's really holding up very well. And this is without any added tiling bump maps or anything. It's just purely the V-Face textures. And it's really not taken a lot of time and effort to get this level of detail in this face. And where this becomes really useful um, is when you are trying to very quickly see how a model is working. You can quite quickly and efficiently get uh, skin detail on there and texture on there and get it into a rendering engine and render it out and get a much better idea of whether the head is working, where areas, areas of the sculpt need improvement, that kind of thing. So it's just a few more work in progress renders. I would definitely recommend V-Face. I think it's a very complete and versatile offering straight out of the box. It's extremely fast and efficient at getting high quality photo real detail onto your model. and uh, I would definitely recommend you use it in your own projects. I hope this tutorial has been useful. Um, please feel free to follow me on ArtStation if you are so inclined. And hopefully in the near future, we will have the final version of this asset up there. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.